So cheers. Cheers, Shaka. <laughs> <laughs> the kids are finally asleep. They're finally asleep. It's about, what, 10.30 p.m.? Mm -hmm. And we wanted to go back on a couple of things that um, we didn't know what to expect before this trip. We have traveled quite a bit before backpacked, but never in a van. And there were a couple of things that um, we didn't know how, how it would go. Um, so a couple of key questions. Um, how the kids are going to take it. What is going to be the routine like? What's going to be the routine like? How are we going to manage the space here? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so a couple of questions we had before we left. A lot of questions. A lot, a lot that we thought we would uh, go back to now that we have a couple of answers. How do kids take it? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> I think the kids are very adaptable. Yeah. To whatever we do with them, they yep. they really like to do it. But most important play. is to play. <laughs> yeah. All that, the time. Yeah. Most of the time. I think it's the hardest because like everything is like a play. So if you take it like a play, they they like it. Yeah. And and even when when we try to please them, like even if we are looking for say a playground, so we often look up on a GPS playgrounds to find a place where there's a slide. For example, the loved slides, and even when we try to do that, I mean, you, there's no guarantee that you're going to be in a town where there's a slide. And that's the bigger thing is whenever you drive, you see a huge slide and you you get super excited, and then you realize that well, this slide belongs to school. Especially they get super excited. <laughs> excited because they look from the van and they see all the time all the slides. And so they are crying and shouting. Spot every single slide. <laughs> and you're like, Stop. hopefully it's not going to be a slide that belongs to a school because we can't get there. Yeah. Um, but I I reckon that as long as they're with us, they they don't they're fine. Mm -hmm. I think so. They're really, they're really adapted to to everything. I mean, they they rarely talk about home. Mm -hmm. it, we have there to bring are it things, up. I think, or or there are things that remind them of home. Like uh, Elliot, he had when we visited the Blue Ridge Parkway, and he saw like he saw the wooden houses. He would think that it's his granddad's oh. uh, creation. Yeah, yeah, because his granddad builds a playground or no, a campgrounds uh, with wooden houses um, but besides that, I mean as long as they've got the chocolated milk and the mornings yeah, like and, milk, and we let them play and, and as long as they, they can play they are fine yeah what's amazing though is how uh, we talked about that yesterday how it stimulates them mm-hmm I mean, they, they, we went to, I mean, you see it in videos, so it's a bit of a spoiler, but um, uh, we went to places like NASA yeah. uh, in Houston, and they keep talking about rockets. Until now, yeah. They're, they're the just time. crazy about and rockets. Anything can be a rocket, like anything. a piece of wood or yeah. a bottle or, <laughs> I don't know, anything. Anything, yeah, they turn anything into a rocket, and they're... I find it amazing how, for example, Tom, because he's a lot more conscious than Elliot, how he got into Earth and and planets and All the, the moon and system. the sun. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he gets it. Yeah. I mean, he, I wouldn't question him on, on that too harshly, but he, he gets it. Yeah. That's quite amazing. And Elliot, we talked about as, as well quite a bit, is how for two two and a half years old I mean he's he's super open and uh, to anything like he wouldn't mind to go to a stranger and talk about anything and yeah because just because his day is not the same any any day is different yeah he he's really stimulated I think. Uh, for me it feels like he's been thrown into life yeah Sometimes, like it, it a like it, sometimes a bit too much, sometimes a bit too much because he's observing everything and he knows everything how to, like he is touching everything. He knows every button of this van, yeah, like he knows how to, do, yeah, he, he, he could probably drive this van <laughs> if yeah. we need a third driver. Um, but it's, for me that, that's the feeling is it feels like Elliot's been thrown into life 
and and it's like there's so many things that he mm -hmm. he sees i mean he keeps talking about uh, rvs and how many how many rvs are on the road and kids living in rvs and yeah. um talking about all the big trucks we see in, in the u.s that we never see back then in europe i mean they're not as big or not as impressive as here mm -hmm. um so yeah so that that was on kids so to wrap it up the kids uh, are really happy i think they're really happy and as long as mom and daddy look happy that they're, they're happy yeah all yeah. we have to do is make sure that they have they're fed yeah, yeah they have they had enough, enough sleep we need to force them a bit to, to take naps to make yeah. sure that they're not too cranky by the end too of the excited, day yeah. and and make sure that there's this time for them uh that we don't project our expectations on them as to what we want to do during the day or what we'd like them to do but just bring them to your playground let them be kids and do whatever they want to do and scream whatever they want to scream and <laughs> yeah just let them be kids um yeah, yeah that's one thing um, the other topic was for me that was a big thing is moving from a house or, or an apartment where you you sleep in the same place every day to living in a van and um, not knowing where you're going to sleep yeah I, I honestly I, I, I kind, you're of, kind of afraid of yeah, it yeah yeah I know yeah because it, it's um, yeah it's just a massive change right mm -hmm. I and mean, back back then, if and you asked me where would you sleep, you know, yeah. even even in our in the city where we lived, I would kind of struggle to say, well, yeah, you could leave. Where can you sleep? Yeah, yeah you could, you could park by for free. <laughs> yeah, for free on top of that, you know. Um, so how do we do it? Yeah, we use uh, an application on our phone, which yep. is called I Overlander. Yep. Overlander. Overlander. Yep. <laughs> Overlander. And uh, yeah, it's based on uh, exchange of information. So yep. uh, the people that found a good spot, they put the GPS coordinates. And if you find a good spot, you put your GPS coordinates. Yep. And it's kind of an exchange. And it works like very well. You can find really yep. nice spots. I, I think that um, one of the game changer in this type of trips is smartphones. Because mm -hmm. we, we do so much with it. So we have a GPS um, called MapsMe. Um, it's usually okay for most places except in big cities where it tells you well you should have turned right right now and <laughs> you missed it um, but so what we do is we use the GPS uh, on a smartphone and then this application called eye of a lender and it, it it's like a map and you see points and you see whether it's a, a gas station whether it's water whether it's a laundry whether it's an official campground or whether it's a, um, um, an informal cam mm -hmm. campground for example and then when you click on it you can see um, description. descriptions yeah. reviews the dates of the people who went there and up to pictures if you have data I haven't seen pictures but we don't have data <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah we, we we use eye of a lender quite a bit the other thing is if if you you happen to be in a place where there's no um, there's no point that has been registered or there's, there's no place that has been marked as a good spot where to spend the night I, I reckon that the best things to do is to look up for a playground because it's typically going to be in a residential area yeah. so you can park nearby and no one really bothers the kids um, are happy because kids are happy play. and the other thing I found is to look up uh, for any park any um, local park where there would be trails because often you have a parking lot at yeah, the beginning yeah, of, of the trailheads, trailheads yeah. and no one controls that yeah, that place true, so yeah. you can go there and, and you can park your car there's often other cars because mm. people have been on a hike for two or three days so I, I, I reckon that if you look up these and on weekend school <laughs> you can <laughs> go nearby a school and a, and a parking lot usually it's fine there are actually a lot of spots like yeah. where you can park that we would not have imagined before yeah. that we would think that it's forbidden or that the police would come to I mean so far nothing happened away. I mean we've no. never we've never had anyone knocking at the door uh, we never we've never been told to to leave or anything yeah. so it's been really smooth and all right next question can you sleep well in a van I think we How's can your back? <laughs> my back is pretty fine. Yeah. I think we can sleep very well if we sleep as the setting was supposed to be. So, two people down and two people up. This right. is brilliant. This is like super comfortable. 
But what happens every night? Well, every night at about... I mean, it depends. Sometimes it's midnight, sometimes it's like 5 a.m. I'm not sure. But for sure, Elliot comes down. Yeah. Like, he's, he's going to ask for something. He needs to pee, he needs to do something. He's... Whatever. He wakes up, he realizes that mom's not around. And he's calling for you. Yeah. Of course. Uh, and... <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Tom then realizes that Elliot's not there anymore. So when he wakes up. Yeah. So when as yeah. and, and Tom, he wants to go down. So just try to imagine. You know, I know it's hard. We'll show you. <laughs> Four people. And it's in such it's a small. It's like one fifty centimeters by two meters. How wide it is? Yeah. One one fifty. One fifty. I think. Yeah. So two adults, I mean we're on the side, like you're on the shoulder, you sleep on the shoulder and there. Yeah. Um, so can you sleep well in the van? I got used to it. I got used to it as well. And the, the only thing that really drives me nuts is mosquitoes. Okay, so for me it's the, another thing, it's what? the cold. Yeah. Because uh, sometimes you can get like nights which are pretty cold. And yeah. the kids, they don't like to be covered, so... They are cold during the night and they wake up several times and we have to be like really careful. Like as we speak now we are um, beginning of October, it starts to get cold because we went north a bit um, and as much as we have a web so it's um, um, something that heats up it's a heating system that we can turn on and it consumes about 1.3 i think liters per hour um but we don't turn it on we just do it in the morning and in the evening sometimes if, if it's really cold but it's now it is really warm yeah it's no, it's nice great, yeah. but it, several days. it's true that when it gets cold the the problem is we we are nicely kind of wrapped up in in the sleeping bag but the kids keep moving yeah. and Elliot keeps getting out of the uh, the sleeping bag he never sleeps in it he always finds a way out yeah um tom kind of stays in it um and personally his mosquitoes it drives me nuts because it's not that much on me because i can hide inside the sleeping bag if even if it's hot but it, it they go after the kids yeah, and we had like quite a lot of issues with that as well. Yeah, as well. at the beginning we had uh, the kids that they, they just had bites all over the body. Um, so um, <laughs> I wake up at like 2 or 3 a.m. and try mm -hmm. to kill every single mosquito in, in the van and <laughs> turn the Leading lights the on. Traces <laughs> <everywhere>. And there's <laughs> blood spots all over the roof <laughs> of the, <laughs> of the van. Yeah. So can we sleep well in the van? I'd, I'd say you can sleep quite quite nicely. Well, you've just said all the disadvantages or all the bad... Uh, and besides that, I mean, it's Volkswagen seats. Yeah, it's quite so hard. It's, yeah. it's quite hard, but you could, you but could always buy a mattress. System, which is yeah, we, good. We bought, how do you call that, something you put off the beds. Um, we bought that in Ikea, and then we have another bed Blank sheet kind of... Kit. Yeah. Blanket. Oh yeah, it's a blanket for picnics yeah, actually. Yeah, picnic. So it's kind of insulates and it's quite heavy, it's mm -hmm. quite thick. And then we have a very nice uh, bed sheet that is very I, I like the, the, the feel of it. Yeah, yeah. So that was can you sleep well in a van? I'd say yes. You can sleep pretty well or you get used to it, you know. I think you get used to it. I think that's Easy. more <laughs> it's better than camping because when yeah, we started yeah. in Canada, I mean we camped and it's also when we started in California van yeah. in our van yeah when we were testing it i think that we were feeling that it's pretty hard the yeah. seats are hard and everything and and either either our body got better or the, the, the car got better but it got better i think our body <laughs> i think we got used to it um next questions is um yeah in europe you don't have much uh, you don't have many credit cards it's all debit cards uh, and a big question for me is do we need to question. have a credit card so I changed I, I opened a bank account with a different bank before to leave uh, we got a, a credit card we have uh, I have three debit cards one credit card you've got one debit, debit card. card and we made sure that we would have both visas and master master cards um, I found it's based on the states 
Like it's yeah. really based on the state and the shop that shop you're going setting. to. Uh, this capital of gas stations where I could try it all, Visa, MasterCard, debit, credit, it just doesn't work. <laughs> Everything rejected. I, I don't know why. Um, Walmart accepted every single time my cards. I've never had an issue at debit Walmart. Debit or credit? Both. Both, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's always without any issues yeah, at Walmart. It's like smaller shops that would not accept. So what we've done is um, we, we withdraw about $300 in cash and and we yeah we, and we, we use, use it, it whenever the, the cards card get rejected yeah. yeah um but it's yeah, it's the ga gas stations i forgot the name i think it's conoco or, or there's there's one gas station that keeps rejecting um all, all my cards so we, we just don't stop there anymore so that was on uh, credit versus debit cards i honestly i don't think it's necessary the credit like, card, you mean? The credit card was needed only once. It's when we rented the car in Halifax mm -hmm. that they wouldn't rent it with a debit card. You, yeah, you so even in gas stations, you can pay with a debit card. Yeah. 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 I, I rarely have issues with the debit card. The cards. only thing is that you need to count how much you have to put True. in the car. True. Is with the, with the debit cards, you need to pay up front. So you go to the, um, to the teller or to, to the person there at the counter and you say, can you give me 30 bucks, $30 of these lads, pump number three or whatever it is. And, and it's always kind of, you've got to know, you know, how much you can put so that you don't end up paying too much and not being able to use it. Um, but yeah, I, I think you could do it without a credit card unless you want to book hotels or cars, if you want mm. to rent cars. It's true that in hotels, often they ask us, do you have a credit card? And they, they prefer to have a credit card instead of a debit card, but... Yeah, yeah. we don't go to the hotels. So. And funnily, sometimes um, when when I put the cards in the, in the chip reader, um, the, the people at the shop tell me, um, you, you can choose, you can tell the, the, the device whether it's a debit or credit card, and they tell me just say it's a credit. Mm -hmm. Even if it's a debit, uh -huh. and it kind of forces the machine to accept it. To accept it, yeah. So yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, big big question is uh, showers. F funnily enough, it's it's not a question we asked. I was have too much before. You didn't today. ask. No, no, no. I thought. Well, actually, I thought I had answers to that <laughs> questions. Nope. I would imagine that we would be. Swimming in the rivers or God, yes. uh, lakes or feature Canada yeah. with the mountains, the rivers, the bears, fishing yeah, no, salmon. I, I really would and imagine we'd be there that we would bathing. be okay. Yeah, with that. We ne we never bathed in a in a no. river. No. <laughs> we never went to a river. Why? Uh, Either it was too cold. It was too cold. Or there were some animals. There were some animals. Couldn't find a river. We didn't find the river. The river was dirty. Yeah, the, most of the time. Um, we found a river. It's not dirty, but there's a hundred people around. around. Yeah, so... I mean, there, there were a couple of... Cu yeah, it didn't work out... Work as I as imagined planned, it. Yeah. Yeah, as planned, yeah. So, plan B, solar showers. Solar shower. You've got the answers to this issue, right? No. <laughs> it doesn't so, work, neither. We have a solar shower. Um... So far, we have we used, used it, it once. once. Yeah, but still not. I the think same. we used it. We used it halfway, and then we switched to buckets because it, it just didn't do. Oh, it goes like the flow is very small. Yeah, it's too small, so we we switched to buckets uh, of water. Why not solar showers? Um, simply because we found so far uh, from Canada to to the south of the U.S., we rarely got to places where a we could fill up the the the, 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 the you know the, the the shower itself i mean it's kind of a pouch or yeah. kind of a bag and it's what 20 liters <laughs> yeah so either that there was no water available on the spots um or simply we we could do it but there's people around yeah and we haven't figured a way to take a shower um I mean, if you're in the countryside and there's no one, yeah, sure, yeah, why not? Um, but it's just not practical. Um, and also, like, it was not possible outside because uh, if if we were in the countryside, there would be a lot of mosquitoes. True. So yeah, whenever it's time to take a shower, 
Um, and, you and would have to take a shower at 5 o'clock in the afternoon yeah, or 4 maybe. 4 or 5 p.m. So it means when everybody's here, uh, you're doing something anyway. Yeah. Um, so, so how do you shower? In the van. In the van. In the van. So, interestingly enough, we visited, um, and you see in this video, you, we visited NASA in Houston. And we found out that astronauts are using the same trick as we do to shower in space. So it's pretty high tech, right? Um, <laughs> it's not around. <laughs> no, it's not around. But, it's uh, so two ways, I think, baby napkins, like, I, I don't know how you call these. The wipes. Wipes, baby wipes. It's lifesaver, right? In, in extreme conditions, extreme conditions that's like... it's just brilliant. You can clean anything with it. I'm not talking about bunnies, but just like tables, <laughs> whatever you want, even the car sometimes. Um, but what we did is before to go, we bought a very tiny kind of plastic pool for kids and it's more for them to kind of... Well, first it was the plastic pool, but we don't use that anymore. We use like, we have a pool, like yeah. a swimming pool, yeah. very small swimming pool. It's a, probably a, what, one meter wide? One meter per one, one meter, meter wide, yeah. yeah. And we, um, so it's good because in California we've got a tiny living space, but it's big enough to yeah. spread the pool. And then it's and the bit, pool is flexible. So. Yeah, and then it's a bit like we did in Asia back then. It's yeah. it's, a it's a bucket and you just fill up the water, yeah. you know, and and spread it on you yeah. and and use a glove, old and school. It works perfectly. It works. I mean, we don't we just, smell, right? No, no, no. We just hide everything. <laughs> like uh, we put the shades, and nobody yeah. can see us. So I mean, it's true that it's great. You sit in van tour that you can really black out the whole car. No, no one's going to see anything, so it's great that you can take showers and if it's a little bit cold, you can still warm it on, on the stove and yeah, sometimes the kids like a little bit of a warm uh, water. Alright, this one will make it quick. Any intimacy in the van? Oh, that would be a quick here. <laughs> it's possible, I would say. I think it's possible, but I'm I'm really glad we have two beds, an upper bed mm -hmm. and a lower bed. That's the biggest issue, yeah. It, like, uh, if you slept in a standard van, you, you'd have to be a bit creative. Yeah. <laughs> I think Don't so. go into the details. So, yeah, the, it is possible, but it's good that we have two beds. Socializing. Socializing? Yes. <laughs> did, you, did you meet many locals or did you meet many... Um, travelers on the way I would answer for myself enough yep. for myself I don't need so many people so for me it would be enough yep. I'm fine to be alone in the nature <laughs> <laughs> with my husband and kids it's okay how about you I'm more like a lab yeah you know, it's like kind a of labrador. dog that just yeah, <laughs> and I stay with people <laughs> Whenever he sees a person, he's just running towards him or her. I think compared to the backpacking trip we've done in, in, in Asia back then, um, you'd stop in hostels and, you know, um, yeah, in restaurants where you meet people. And here it's great because with the van we can park anywhere, we can eat anywhere, we can sleep anywhere. But it also means that you kind of cut yourself out of the rest of the world. Yeah, but then you meet the people in the places where everybody goes as well. So, so typically you'll meet people in, for example, national parks, in, in uh, places that you're going to go and visit, but, but I find the interactions very short. Mm -hmm. um, if you recall, for example, in Asia, you yeah, meet people in hotels and then... Like one week with yeah, you'd people. spend one week with people, you tag along and you do stuff with them. Mm -hmm. Whilst here it's just a, a friendly chat, I mean, it's great. Yeah. But it, it never went really it's beyond that. kind of an that. exchange of experience and that's it. advice. And, so, and that's it. Then everybody goes uh, his direction, his yeah. or her direction. Yeah. But um, so far, the, the people in Canada have been amazing. I think it, that they were, really, they were really cool. Really cool. Uh, in the US, people are very friendly. I found they're very welcoming. They're, they're very polite and everything. Yeah. But it just doesn't go further than that. Compared to Canada, for me, that, that's the thing. In Canada, I had the feeling that you'd go a little bit beyond mm -hmm. the, the polite chat and, and, you know, yeah, 
uh, whilst in the US I found that it it's very friendly it's very warm but it doesn't go much beyond that yeah. 